appreciate you joining us today at, uh, for the CDI Solero uh, interactive presentation. Uh, we're going, I'm going to spend just a few minutes kind of introducing the concept, talk a little bit about our um, partnership with uh, Solero, and then I'm going to turn it over to Nigel from uh, Castle Rock, or from Solero, who is going to uh, go through a live demonstration of the product to give you uh, kind of an insight as to how it could be utilized to help your students, both from a short-term uh, perspective of, of preparing for the upcoming state testing, and then from an ongoing uh, perspective, should they should you decide it's something you want to add to your um, online subscription and uh, utilize going forward into next year. Um, so uh, my name is Glenn Collins, and I am uh, here at CDI responsible for what we refer to as education uh, ready devices. And one of the products we bundle with those is Solero, and that's why uh, we're here today, just to talk about that partnership and how that works. To, uh, to keep this as interactive as possible, uh, you have the ability to send questions to us using your control panel, your GoToMeeting control panel. There's a little question box there. So any questions you send us throughout the presentation, we'll do our best to answer. If it's something we can't answer during the presentation, then we'll be uh, happy to send you an answer by email uh, within the next 24 hours. Uh, I talked a, a briefly a moment ago about my role here at CDI being um, the uh, individual responsible for what we call education-ready devices. And those devices we typically bundle with some services along with some applications, some management tools. And one of the tools we're going to be bundling going forward is the Solero offering that you're going to see today. So the reason we're introducing it is we want our customers who uh, are, uh, have done business with us in the past and considering doing business with us to take advantage of a free offer that allows you to have access to all the students in your school or district for the balance of this school year. And we're hoping that you see value in the product enough that when you consider new products in the future that you'll look at our education products, which include the Solero offering for one year for no charge. Um, and that's really all I have to say at this point. I'm going to turn it now over to, I just have to change screens here to give the presentation to Nigel. And Nigel is going to uh, take over and he's going to talk to us about the product, show us the offering. Uh, by all means, as I said, let's make it interactive, ask questions as we go through this. Uh, Nigel, say hello. Hey, guys. Um, my name is Nigel Proach. I'm located at Castle Rock Head Offices here. Uh, we are an educational publisher based out of Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and we produce the product which I'm going to show you guys today called Solero. So I'm going to begin sharing my screen here, and I'll get the okay from Glenn that you guys can view this, and then I'll get started. Uh, I can see it. If anybody is having trouble seeing the Solero screen, uh, send us a note. Otherwise, I think we're good to go. Perfect. So I'll give you a quick background about Castle Rock and sort of how we came about, but the main reason why we're all here today is to hear about Solero. So Solero is a learning acronym, which stands for Student Oriented Learning Assessment and Reporting Online. And you can see the three main users that we've aimed this product at. Um, these would be our three main customer types that we market towards, or we marketed towards before Solero was even a thought. So Castle Rock was born and bred here in Edmonton, Canada, and it, it, it came into fruition because of the president and CEO, Gautam Rao. Here, he went to the University of Alberta, which is the university here in Edmonton. He graduated from the sciences faculty with a major in mathematics, and during that time, he was a tutor to a bunch of local students who, at the time, in Alberta, would write what they call achievement test or diploma exams. Now, these diploma exams were worth 50% of the student's final grade, so it was quite heavily weighed. And in order to uh, differentiate himself as a tutor and to help his students to the best of his ability, Gautam created a resource. Is he went to the province of Alberta, the education offices, which are here in the city, and he asked them what to do with all of the exams that the students wrote in the past. So I know they're writing an exam. Well, what did you do with last year's exam? And they said, well, we just we can't publish them again because students have already written them, so we rewrite them and we keep the old copies. Gautam asked a simple question, can I license the previously administered exams? The government had no problem with it because 
all you had to do was pay the copyright, and he was given the property. So Gautam took these, he, he ended up licensing seven tests. He took those seven tests, and he broke five of them down, subject by subject, chapter by chapter, and laid them out almost in like a lesson plan format, where he taught individ individual subjects to the students. So if you're having trouble with parabolas or graphing or uh, anything in that matter, you could go through this booklet and learn it, essentially. At the end of the book, Gautam kept two of the exams in full format. So as a student now, before I even set foot in that exam environment, I've already tested myself on two previously administered exams. That gave me some confidence and some pre-practice that I already knew what I was walking into. I know the types of lessons that I was going to look at or questions that I was looking at. And I knew roughly how long it took me to do it. Um, so Gautam students all benefited from this service. They took it back into their classrooms, and uh, word got out that this had been created, and local math teachers from schools around the city started calling. Gautam went, showed them the book. Now schools started purchasing this product. This was back in 1995, and at the time, every single high school in Calgary, which is south of Edmonton, which is roughly uh, around a million people, um, and every school in Edmonton, high school that is, they all purchased this book for their math department. And that is where Castle Rock was born. From there, people started asking where our other products were. Uh, we, we essentially created print study guides for the regions all across Canada. We've since created print study guides for all across the US. And in the process of building all of that content, Solero has been born. Uh, we saw sort of a transition into online services. And not a full transition, that is, but people depend a lot on online resources these days. It's something that you gravitate, gravitate towards at, uh, at least once a day. Uh, for example, we're doing a webinar right now. We're all sitting in front of a computer. Uh, they're essential to our daily lives. So Solero takes all of the content or curriculums from across the US and puts them all in one place. As a teacher, you're tied to a school in a region. You have access to your regionalized curriculum. So if you're in Texas, you're going to have access to the brand new Texas curriculum for math, science, and English language arts for grades 3 through 12. If you're in California, you have a part of the Common Core and you have maybe some old state curriculum, you're going to have access to the old state curriculum for math, science, and English, and you're going to have access to the new Common Core for math, science, and English. So we've aligned Solero 100% to all of the curriculums in all, <coughs> excuse me, in all 50 states. We've done this through lessons and assessment items. One of the major players that's allowed us to do this is the Solero domain map. I'll get into that. Um, as I said, we're available in print and web formats. However, everything that we're going to see today, and I might even show it, um, you have the ability to view on an application on any major operating device. So any Windows operating device, any Android operating device, or any iOS or Apple operating device. You can download a native application for free from each app store and log in with your username and password at either the student or the teacher and access all the content. It's a comprehensive assessment tool which utilizes both formative and summative assessments. The summative assessments mimic those assessments which are being delivered by PARC and SBAC for the new Common Core Computer Adaptive Assessments and those technology enhanced item types that they're going to be assessing the students with. And as you can see on the very last point there, it's filled with traditional being multiple choice and written response question types and the new technology enhanced item types which are up to 30 different ways of testing students and we've been fortunate enough to work with some major players in developing that technology and writing the content behind those pieces. So we're going to jump into Solero now. Uh, the very first thing that we're going to look at is the teacher profile. So as a teacher when I log into Solero this is the first thing that I'm going to see. We're going to quickly go over this. Uh, the teacher, as you can see on the top, can add a, a various number of different courses. So I can have an English, la English Language Arts 11 course. I can have a Mathematics 3. I can have a Physics, a Science 5. Um, it's very diverse and uh, unique in that way that whether I'm an educator that's sort of overseeing a department, whether it's a high school teacher that's going from 10 to 12 or an elementary school that's going from 3 to 6, 3 to 7, I'm able to add all of the content. Say I'm teaching a science 6 course and I realize that some of my students aren't quite comprehending the material that I'm teaching them today in class. 
I need to go back and reteach the material from Science 5. I simply add the Science 5 lesson or course. I then have the ability to access all of the materials that the students would need to see or I would need to teach to in the Science 5 curriculum. And jumping into that material, I'm given descriptions, images, and not necessarily a lesson plan that takes over and teaches for the teacher, but it acts like a template that showcases, okay, this is where I can start, this is where I can finish, these are the types of uh, examples I'm able to use, and that students are able to comprehend at this grade level. So we're specifically going to dive into mathematics today, and I'm going to show you a Math 8 course, which mimics, in this case, the U.S. Common Core for Georgia. So I'm in a Georgia-based school right now. As I said, we've got curricular resources for all 50 states. Whether you're a part of the new Common Core, you've created your own spin of that Common Core, or you're still following a previous state standards. Within each subject area, Math 8 will use, for example, along the top we've broken it down into five chapters. Math 7, as you can see, is broken down into different five chapters. So going through Math 8, I can see I have the number systems, expressions and equations, functions, geometry, statistics, and probability. And then within each chapter, I'm built of subchapters. So Solero is built in the following manner. I'm going to quickly go over this just so it helps uh, clarify. We have three major domains in the system. Each domain, one would be mathematics, one would be English, and one would be science, holds roughly 10,000 separate attributes. This attribute is the most granular yet teachable concept that we believe teachers have to teach to and students need to learn in order to comprehend that final subject matter. So each attribute is made up of lessons, questions, discussions, and multimedia items. It varies from lesson plan to lesson plan or attribute to attribute, but you can see how cross-curricular this single attribute is. Adding fractions with unlike denominators applies in Ontario grade 7 math, in Washington grade 5 math, Texas grade 6 math, New York and the Common Core, for, uh, et cetera. So laying this out for teachers, we thought it's very important to show them how we broke this down. So everything that we're seeing here on this left-hand side is a specific attribute. Each one of these attributes is tied to a standard or multiple standards. So 8.ns.1, this is a standard of know that numbers that are not rational are called irrational, etc. You can see the standard, it's quite large, and for a fairly veteran teacher, they could look at this standard and say, okay, I know how to teach this, I know how to break this down, uh, I understand how my students need to comprehend this. But even for an intermediate or beginner level teacher, this is quite a daunting task. So as you can see, we've laid it out in what I call the standards roadmap. As a teacher or an educator, I can see 8.ns.1 applies specifically to five concepts over here on the left. So these are five different ways that I'm able to break this material down to ensure that my students understand it at, like I said, the most granular yet teachable level. So going into the lesson, just like the science lesson, I'm given descriptions, examples, Say I have the, the ability to pull this up on a smart board or a projector in front of my class. I can practice show height examples with my students right at the time of teaching. And I'll repeat myself here, but we did not mean for this to simply take over the teaching environment. Teachers still need to teach the students. There's that connection that students need to feel that, okay, I'm not just reading this. Um, this does not replace the teacher, but it definitely gives them a drafting point. Students see all of the same material that we're looking at right here. So if I jump into the student profile and we go to Math 8 and I go into the number system, I'm going to see all of the exact same pieces that I would in the teacher profile. So there's no discrepancy per profile. The one cool thing is all of this material was written specifically for the reading level of the grade uh, that it's aimed at. So this being a Mathematics 8 lesson, this would have been written by an elementary uh, or junior level mathematics teacher. These writers that we've hired all work here at our offices in Edmonton or they're contracted out 
and they're vetted in the way that they have their education degree or their master's in education, they are currently teachers, or they have taught in the past. So during the summer, our offices fill up quite a bit, and we have a lot of contractors working for us. These would be individuals who are looking for maybe a little bit extra work. But during the school year, it's, it's a definitely a little more quiet around here. So ideally, once I teach anything to the students, um, I want to go above and beyond some of the material, especially within Solero. This cannot be shown to one group in California, one group in Texas, for example, and ex you, you can't expect it to apply the same way in each case. So as a teacher, an educator, I have the ability to add what we call a media library link or a playlist link. This media you're able to input can be anything from the web. It can be a web URL, it can be a video, a Dropbox document, a Google Drive document. All I need to do is type it in the URL or paste it in. Automatically, Solero is going to build a title and a description. I have the ability to edit that as well. And then I have two different choices here. Automatically, when I save this item, regardless if I choose either of these pieces at the bottom, Solero will save this so my class sees it. So every student in my class will see this Solero video because I think it benefits them in some way above and beyond this material in Solero. If I select my institution, every student who's in Mathematics 8, regardless if they're in my class or not, if they're under my school's umbrella, they will see this material. If I share this publicly, everybody under the Solero umbrella, as soon as it makes it through our vetting process, will be published publicly and students will benefit from this material. So we've tried to create sort of a collaborative learning environment where teachers are able to share materials, whether it's uh, cross-region or within the exact same school. But it definitely opens up the barriers and says, hey, I've got this great piece of information that I found, and I think it works really great. I want to show it to you as well. So ideally now, once I've shown students this material, whether I've been using Flow or not, I want to create an assessment. I want to figure out where my students are with relation to what I've taught them. I need to see what they comprehended, what they haven't, so I want to add an assessment. And that, uh, whether it's current or the, the past method of creating an assessment where you had to go on and you had to, first of all, build the assessment. You had to choose your items, you had to write the items, you had to type them, you had to photocopy numerous pieces of paper. You then had to answer them, uh, pass the assessment out, mark it, review it with the students. It was quite an onerous process that could take quite a bit of time. And by the time you actually figured out where the learning gaps are with the students' abilities, you might have already taught several other pieces that were, were that those pieces you were testing on were essential. So now as a teacher, I can create a 1 to 20 formative assessment, question assessment, in less than five minutes. We'll say math 8 expressions and equations. I want 15 questions and I'm going to select expressions and equations. So immediately as a teacher I see I have 211 questions at my disposal. Now as I said all of the material we're seeing today in, in Solero is property of Castrock. We, we've, we've written it all. And I believe I said that we've written this material for some fairly major players in the U.S. and Canadian markets with regarding, uh, in regards to testing. So as a whole, if I choose to select all of this material, we'll see how many we have, but I have 576 pieces or items that I'm able to choose from should I wish to choose from such a large area. I just want expressions and equations. When I click through the next step, Flora is going to build me that 15-question assessment. So immediately, no formatting on my part, no really choosing. Solero makes up the decisions for me. I now have the ability to go through and vet each individual question. So I can read the question, I can read the answers, the correct answer, and then look at the step-by-step -step solution for achieving that correct answer. Going through each question, I can OK them. Say I get to a question like this where it, it's something that we've looked at already or I'm not sure that my students are ready for this. We're going to be touching on it next class. I want to replace that question. 
this is where I have the ability to dive into that 211 question database of items and specifically hand pick a question that I know will benefit my class. So we can select this new question. Flare will automatically input the new question, the new answer, and the new step-by-step -step solution. So this process can be repeated for each individual, each individual question as many times as you want. So essentially, you can create a hand-picked assessment that's completely individualized to a single student or your class. When I click through the next step, Solero is going to break down for me the question coverage. So I can see that I've got 15 questions from expressions and equations, 8 from this section, 7 from this section. When I save this assessment, we've just completed what used to be quite a large task in the way that we had to build the assessment, we had to mark it, we then had to pass it out. Solero is also creating a print PDF for me. So now I have this activate button. I can activate it. It automatically sends the assessment out to all my students. Should I wish to print it out and hand it out to them in person, I can press this print answer key and, or print button. Here's the exact test which we just created. So students have the ability to write it on paper. I'm also given a print answer key. Should I wish this to be practice, I click this show results button and Solero automatically shows the results to the students when they've completed the assessment. Should I want it to be kept uh, more of a quiz type situation where I don't want students sharing answers once they've completed it, I unclick this and students aren't able to review answers until I deactivate the assessment. And once I deactivate it, it essentially closes the assessment, it takes it off their desk and it puts it back in my folder, but it's already marked. So I'm given an online live report that I can view at any time. If I were to issue this assessment to my students on a Friday afternoon, I can log in on a Sunday night or on a Monday morning, even before they walk into class and see exactly where the learning gaps are. I'm able, I'm able to see question by question, student by student, exactly where they went wrong. Question two, red flag. Automatically I can see what the standard is. So I need to relook at the standard with my class. I can see that they all answered incorrectly, answering the exact same question. So there's a little bit of professional development that can take place here as well where I can say, hey, if all of my students are answering it this way, there must be something that I can do better as a teacher to help them out. So with the class, before even moving on to the next piece of material, we can sit down and we can look at this individual question. We can go over the different answers. We can talk about why each one is correct or incorrect. I have the ability to show the solution, show my students where they answered, where the correct answer lies, the step-by-step -step solution for achieving that answer, and then the link back into Solero to help reteach any missed content. So Solero essentially works in the way uh, that any normal classroom environment would, in the way that students are taught material, they're then assessed on the material that they've been taught, and then they're re-taught any material that might have been missed. So it's a, it, it's a consistent loop that students and teachers are constantly revolving in, where they're always being pushed back to the material that matters most, that being, as I said, any learning gaps from the previous class's work. So we've seen the teacher's uh, profile from a fairly high-level perspective. Are there any questions specifically regarding the teacher before I move on to the student profile? Here, sir. Okay. Great. The next thing we're going to look at is the student profile. I might show a bit of the mobile here, but what we're going to mainly focus on right now in the student profile are the summative tests. Now these are the same summative tests that uh, I referenced before. They model the SBAC and the PARC assessments, and we've built them right into Solero utilizing some of those technology enhanced item types that students will be seeing on the Calvin Core Computer Adaptive Assessment or Computer Adaptive Assessments for any region across the U.S. We'll go into Math 8 again. We'll click on the year-end practice. Retake the test, finish save test. This is where I have the ability to now view or practice pre-canned assessments. So this, for example, is a click and drag question. 
This allows the student above and beyond the typical multiple choice or written response uh, questions to interact with the item. As back in Park, uh, ACT, they've all done studies on how well students comprehend knowledge and from when we test them, how well they're actually tested. They actually found out in those tests that only 60% of knowledge is assessed through written response and multiple choice questions. With these new question types, we're able to hit a lot higher marks and see uh, more in-depth results on how well students actually know material. Here would be another simple multiple choice. This, is, for example, is a what's called a, um, a higher response or a higher order thinking question type where students need to select all of the applicable answers in order to achieve the correct answer. In this respect, they fill out or complete the equation based on the question above. A graphing type question where students read the question above again and then plot points on a map or on a grid. All of these points snap into position. To remove the point, you simply click it and click it again. Everything that we're seeing here does work on a mobile device. It's pretty neat in that respect. We were able to build it in such a way that no matter what we're using, whether it's Windows, Android, or iOS, I can go in. We'll jump into the test zone. We've got a lot of quizzes here. We'll jump into this one that we were in. I believe we were on question nine. So here's all my points on the grid. I want to pick that one up and I want to place it over here. Pick this one up, place it over here. Here's that same fill in the blank question type. So it's a pretty unique system. Um, we haven't seen many other systems on the market which allow students to interact at this level with items. So if I finish the test now, it's going to automatically mark it for me. Of course, I'm not going to do as well as I would hope, but I'm now able to review this material. So we can go in and look at the very first answer. Here's my answer. Here's the correct solution, rational and irrational, and here's the step-by-step -step solution for achieving that answer. I can go back and go into the number system again and review any of the materials that we were looking at. So all of the content that was available online is available on the mobile device. Should I wish to create study tools in the system, I can create notes and flashcards. I can also, in that respect, start practice quizzes. So Solero just like on the teacher end, how you can create an assessment to pass out to the students, students can create assessments for themselves. I want to start a practice quiz. This is going to create a one to six question assessment for me and quiz me just on the pieces in that chapter. So now I can go through and answer each individual question on my tablet, on my mobile, wherever I might be. As long as I have an internet connection, I'm able to do this. And say, I get home and it's dinner time or my tablet dies or I lose internet, uh, whatever might happen, I have the ability to pick this up right where I left off. So if I go back into Math 8, I go into assessment results, I can see right here on March 26, here's an assessment which we just started. I want to finish that up. Here are the three questions that we answered on my mobile. I can go back, I can look at each individual answer. Say I want to change my answer, but I'm just guessing. I can click that. This is going to reveal to Solero and to myself that I don't quite understand the content. And regardless if I get it correct or incorrect, it will push me back to the material within the system. So we'll just guess on all of these because that's truly what is happening. And we'll finish this assessment and mark it quickly so you can see what the student report looks like. So when I click Save and Score Quiz, just like that summative assessment, it's going to be automatically marked and fairly good, 50% for all yeses, but obviously there's some work to do as a student. I have the ability to go through and review each individual guess. So here's one I got incorrect. 
I need to review my guess. Here's the related lesson. Question three I got correct. However, I guessed, so Solera was saying, you don't know this. We need to go back and look at it. We can take a look. We can read the question, see our answer, the step-by-step -step solution. And just like with the teacher, I have the ability to jump back into the system and reteach any of the content that might have been missed. Now once I'm here, just like I could on the tablet, I want to create a flashcard or a note. By highlighting the content, I have the option. What it's going to do is it's going to automatically capture in a text bubble anything that I highlighted. What to do when multiplying by 10. Once I save that, in line with the text that I highlighted, I'm going to have a new flashcard. This is just like a tangible flashcard that I hold in my hand. I have the ability to read the question. I then flip it over, and on the other side, I'm given all of the material that I highlighted. I then, just like the Just Guessing button, am given the ability to rate myself on how I feel I answered that question. Visually, that's going to show me how I feel. I can also go back to the lesson, and this works in the fact that Solera works through what we call a directed domain map. Do you realize, or you saw how everything is connected through attributes in the domain? Those attributes are all linked in similar ways in that in order to arrive at an attribute, you need it to come from an attribute. So if I arrive at add fractions with unlike denominators, I came from one of three places as a student. And if I get this incorrect, I need to get pushed back to the material to help reteach some piece of missed content. So Solero, just like you saw with those links, is pushing me back to the content that matters most. So I'll, I'll go back to add fractions with like denominators. We'll try some questions there. We'll look at some of that material, and we'll move on. Same thing with reduced fractions to the simplest form and determine a common denominator. So Solero is fairly interactive in the way that all parties are consistently I'll reiterate again, uh, in that same process of learning content, assessing themselves on the content they learn, and then reteaching any learning gaps in the content, whether it's here on Solero or the materials that they learn in class. Um, for right now, however, where we are seeing most of our traction, if not all of our traction in the US, is within the summative assessments. Those summative assessments are in English language arts as well as mathematics. So we can take an English language arts test. They'll be made up of similar types of questions. You can see how in English we do what we call tagging. So the student needs to find this word. We highlight it in the text so that it eliminates that um, effort of them trying to find that single word. Here's a better example for a matching type question with tagged pieces. So if I'm looking for this first one, I simply go up and I find it in the text, I then tag it to who I believe, the narrator, the father, and so on. There are reading comprehension questions where the student has a piece read to them. So they go through and they actually have materials read to them, and then they identify the best answer, and so on. So just like the math assessments, the English assessments model the Park and SBAC uh, computer adaptive test utilizing those same technology enhanced item types. Finally, the last thing that I wanted to show you are some of the reports. With every student account comes a free teacher account and a free parent account. Now I'm going to show you the reports through the teacher profile. However, all of these are at the parent level as well. The parent gets their full own login. They can access it through their own username, their own password. They have the ability to change the student's username, change the student's password. Um, it's unbelievable the amount of times we get support calls uh, where parents are calling and saying, my child has to do their homework, and they forgot their password. Um, we simply show them that they have the ability to change the student password. Problems resolved. But my favorite part about the parent profile is this standards report. Now, it really illuminates to the parent and to the teacher what the child knows in relation to the curriculum. So when I click on standards, this is for Mathematics 8. Again, we're looking to the teacher's point of view, but parents see all this as well. 
I see all of the subchapters or chapters within the curriculum. I see assignment questions, and I see Solero practice quiz and test questions. So the assignment questions would be what I've assigned the student as the teacher. The Solero practice and quiz questions would be what the student has taken on their own in those already generated, I want to take a quick six, six question assessment, I want to do a summative test, that sort of thing. But if I view them all, Solero is going to break down for me by standard and by lesson exactly what the student has seen. So this standard, 8.ee.1, know and apply the properties of integer exponents to generate equivalent numeric expressions. This student has seen 12 questions. They've gotten five correct, seven incorrect, seven still need review, and here are the lessons which they've seen in Solero or they've looked at. So now as a parent, I get a fairly deep dive into what my student is actually doing, not only in Solero, but also in the class. Uh, this information is representative based on, uh, it, it, it represents based on their teacher's teachings as well, because if they're coming out of class and they're using this at home, uh, obviously they learned it somewhere, whether it's Solero or their teacher. My student right here, or my child right here, 8.ee.1, they're not quite comprehending that material. There's obviously some review here. I know we have several parents in the office here. I'm not a parent yet, so I can't speak to this level. But they know their children have a math quiz coming up on Friday. They sit down with their child on a Wednesday or a Thursday night, and they say, let's go through some practice tests. I know roughly what you're going to be tested on. I can find it easy enough within my parent profile. Let's do some tests together. I want to really see where you need help. And hopefully, I'm able to help you using this material. But if not, your teacher will for sure. So that is essentially everything from a fairly high level view within Solero. Uh, I really urge you to try the program. It can be fairly daunting. I've showed you a lot of information. On our website and through the links that are provided by CDI uh, is all the information that you're going to need to sign up for completely free. It comes with student support videos, teacher support videos, uh, teacher and student manuals that you can download and really walk yourself through the step-by-step -step process. And hey, you might only see really um, use of the assessment generator or those summative tests in the student side. Anything that we're able to do to make your life easier as a teacher or help your students do better in the class is our goal. And if we're able to achieve that goal in some way, um, then we've done our part. So I want to thank you all for uh, viewing this demonstration today. If there's no questions about what you saw in either the, the teacher or the student side, I'm going to pass this back over to Glenn. So it's just a couple of quick questions. One, and they were both really in terms of um, devices. So the que there was one question about whether it was available in the Windows Store. Somebody had looked and not seen the application in the Windows Store, but I think you said it was. Yeah, yeah. No, it should be available. Um, it, it would be under just Solero, so S-O-L-A-R-O, -O, I believe. Okay. I personally have a, an iOS device, so I have it downloaded on that. I've shown it to you on an iOS device today, but I know I've demoed it on our Windows devices as well. Um, it's actually quite funny. If we're demoing to Microsoft or to any company that uses Windows and we don't use a Windows product, it's the very first question they ask. <laughs> so Why aren't you using we'll, Windows? So, the, yes, there is, a, is an, there is an application, and I will pass the link on to CDI yeah. so that they're able to forward that out. Perfect. If you do that, we'll stick it on our website, and then people can get it. And okay. the other question was Chromebooks. Chromebooks, yes. You talked so about anything, Android. again, if, it, if Chromebooks have an App Store, if they're in the Android Store or the Google Play Store, you can download an application there. But because Chromebooks are essentially an internet browser, you're able to access the internet, anything with a web connection can access Solero. Okay. So even an item like a BlackBerry, which isn't a very adopted piece of technology, um, have an internet connection with a BlackBerry, you can access all of this content regardless if you have an application or not. OK, great. Perfect. All right, well, I don't see a lot of other questions, so uh, thank you very much. Nigel, you did a great job, as always. Uh, for those of you who did join us, uh, I appreciate it. You can continue to sell, send your questions uh, to myself or to uh, freesolero at cdicomputers.com, and we will uh, get you answers right away. Uh, for all of those who joined us today, you will get an email within the next 48 hours that explains um, how, how to get free access till the end of uh, July uh, about our partner with partnership with Solero in terms of uh, 
uh, what's free on the devices we're selling, as well as so, if something you wanted to subscribe to after July, the end of July, how much that would cost through CDI. So uh, on behalf of CDI and the folks at Solero, I appreciate your time. I hope you found today both uh, interesting and informative, and I look forward to talking to you all in the future. Have a great day.